Hi guys, welcome back to Small Farmer Life. Hope you're all having an awesome day and what a glorious day it is. I've had a good couple of two weeks actually of sun. I've been growing lots of trees. Got to load up my mate's garden. What I've just sprouted under these trees. Got loads of saplings to plant all around the farm. But that's not why I'm making this video today, guys. I've also been cutting a hell of a lot of wood that goes all the way along the field. I'm not going to be cold this winter. If you watched the last video, you'll know that I was talking about starting a mushroom farm. I was sat on the front of the big shed over the back, which needed repairing. So it needed a new floor, which I've put in. And it also needed jacking up on one corner because it sunk around about nine inches. So that needed to be lifted up. And now it's nice and level. So I've got a grow area to grow the mushrooms. That is seven to eight meters long by 4.2 meters wide. Now, a lot of people say when you first start out grow mushrooms, just buy some already inoculated substrate bags like Jeremy Clarkson did on Clarkson's farm, if you watched Clarkson's farm. And he had them in the underground bunker. Now, he had a shop and he had his firm to sell them at a premium, probably, because he sells everything in that shop at a premium, especially if he's had anything to do with it. But I haven't got the firm and the shop to sell them at a premium. Would people even pay that? if it wasn't Jeremy Clarkson, probably not. But he bought in probably hundreds of mushroom blocks and sold them through the farm. And he turned over around about 30 odd thousand pounds profit, I think, if I can remember rightly, off those mushrooms. And he bought them already in the blocks, pasteurized and inoculated with mushroom mycelium. Now, the thing is, if I did that, I would be putting out thousands of pounds to buy those blocks. And then I would have to find people to buy those mushrooms, but I don't already have an outlet and people ready to buy them mushrooms. So I've chose to start at the other end of the mushroom business. Now, before we get into that part, if you're thinking about buying some land, you want to live on your own land, you want to start a small rural farm, mushroom farm like me maybe, or micro greens farm, or even growing salad greens organically, anything like that guys, think about hitting the subscribe button, go back check out some of the videos I've already uploaded the channel, you'll find lots of useful information in those videos, and also think about hitting the bell button for future videos, if you like the video at the end of the video, think about giving it a like. But where I'm going to start on my journey into the mushroom world is at the very beginning. So I'm going to start with mushroom spore print, liquid culture and agar plates. The little petri dishes that are full of agar and full of nice mycelium that look like big snowflakes. And if I can nail that part of the business, which I think I can. Now, am I going to have times where I'm going to get contamination? Of course I am. Every person who grows mushrooms deals with contamination at some point but that's where you learn don't you so for the last couple of months I've been purchasing and looking for the items I need to start my own little lab so I've had to look all over the internet for these HP 14 filters that are really hard to come by in the UK or you pay a massive amount through a special laboratory for them but I found a couple that this guy had down in Leicester 1.2 meter by 600 which are normally 900 pounds and you have to pay them two months before you get it so basically they're collecting all the money in so they can order a container full and get it shipped over from China and that's why you've got to wait so they're just taking your money so they can make profit off your money I also got the other one for 300 pounds so I paid 500 pounds or 550 pounds for the big one normally would have been 895 pounds 
brand spanking new and 300 pounds for the little one because the little one are around about 700 pounds so i got both of mine for the price of the big one and that's the biggest outlay when it comes to growing mushrooms in a lab them laminar flow hoods are really important to keep a clean space that and a shit ton of isopropyl alcohol 70 percent to keep wiping your hands down and that sort of thing and cleaning any contamination from the workbench in your work area now you need lots of little things like your petri dishes mason jars for liquid cultures you need a scalpel and lots of replacement blades for the scalpel you need self-healing injecting ports for the top of your mason jars if you're making them yourself because you can buy them pre-made but i'm trying to save every penny i can so i'm making what i can and buying what i need to buy but light malt extract and agar agar to make the actual solution for your peak dishes you've got to buy all of that gloves masks there's so much that i've bought i've lost count staying in day after day waiting for deliveries and just writing down everything but the good news is when i did my excel sheet of how much it would cost me to start my mushroom operation buying everything it came in at two and a half thousand pounds and i'm only at 1100 pounds now plus a friend came up from kent he has businesses up here the other day he had a grocery shop and he sent me a list of all the stuff he's got left over plus he's given me some free tents to grow mushrooms in where i'll probably trial my mushrooms at the beginning before i go into a bigger room but he's going to give me humidifiers to keep the humidity right in the room for cost and there's a beauty there that i really want and he's got all the intake fans inline fans and that sort of thing that you need to get air around the room i'm presuming and big filters that go on these fans as well all from people who grow you know what the smoke but anyway that's where i'm at and i think i'm starting out in the right place am i going to make mistakes of course i'm going to make mistakes everybody does but all i've got to do once i've nailed that part of the operation is then inoculate my own substrate but what this also gives me the opportunity to do this year i've built a camper van i want to go out in the camper van and do a bit of touring around the uk and around europe now if i started growing mushrooms buying in already inoculated substrate blocks i wouldn't have time to go on a tour because they don't take long to actually spread through the substrate and they'll be ready to fruit in two weeks then you've got to cut holes in the bag and then they grow out of that bag in like a week or so and they'll be ready to harvest straight away and they don't last long because they're fresh otherwise you'd see them in supermarkets all over the place so they don't last that long and it would keep me on the farm but if i start at the beginning with liquid cultures and the petri dishes and growing them out like big snowflakes that have got no contamination in those liquid cultures because i have to test them out obviously all the petri dishes i can just put them in the refrigerator and then that slows the growth down and then last for years and i can go away without worrying this year and do my traveling and then next year once i've already learned all the basics of lab work then i can start growing mushrooms in the shed i'll build a big pasteurizing machine i've got a good plan to build one the farmer down the road who's 75 year old has loads of stuff lying around his yard everything i'll probably need to make my own substrate pasteurizing machine and i'll probably pasteurize around about 100 kilo at first but for testing purposes i can use the pressure cooker that i bought which is 22 liters to put in like four bags of two kilo substrate and pasteurize 
that substrate to test out the mushroom cultures that I've got at hand and see if they're any good, see how good the fruit, see what the colonation's like and that sort of thing. So I think I'm doing the right thing, starting from the beginning, dipping my toes in right at the beginning and going all the way through the cycle because then I can sell liquid cultures in syringes because I can turn one 10 mil liquid culture that I buy from somebody else into one litre of liquid culture and once I've tested that out and if there's no contamination in that liquid culture I can sell syringes as well 10 mil syringes for 14.99 and if I only paid 14.99 for the first culture then I've potentially got £1,499 in that litre jar if I can sell all 100 syringes barring a few expenses like the syringes themselves which are pennies but the special syringes with a lunar lock on them and I've got all the little tips in that that you just screw on once you've got the mycelin in the syringe and I'm going to build a brand around this mushroom operation I'm not just going to put it out like on Etsy I'm going to build a brand around it I'm going to have all my syringe packaging branded so they'll go out in boxes I'll have all the other things that I'm selling grain spawn that'll be branded with the brand name on it and all the information needed to know to transfer the grain spawn into substrate I'll sell substrate which I'll brand as well so everything that I'm going to be selling I'm going to brand it I'll brand it coming from this farm but I've got a wicked name for the actual brand itself and it's available it's not being trademarked yet so I'm not going to say it on the channel yet but anyway you will see it guys and you will see me fail but you'll also see me succeed in other ways and hopefully eventually I have a thriving mushroom operation but it will take a couple of years and that's the journey we're on but I can only achieve this because I have my own piece of land with plenty of areas and plenty of buildings to start growing mushrooms in and a clean area to start and build a lab in and like I say I'm ready to do that all I've got to do now and I sent him a message earlier on is order my mushroom mycelene so till next time guys if you like the video hit the like button if you haven't subscribed and you should subscribe hit the subscribe button go back check out some of the videos i've already up on the channel you'll find lots of useful information in those videos and also think about hitting the bell button for future videos thanks again to all my parents couldn't thank you guys enough and youtube members really appreciate the support especially now i'm starting up this mushroom operation i need every penny i can get but i will be making more videos and i'll definitely be showing the first time i attempt to make my own agar plates and transfer mushroom mycelin and cultures into my own liquid for cultures what i've made up and pasteurized and all that sort of thing so i'll show you all of the process and show you the outcomes of my mushroom techniques let's say because that's what they'll be at the beginning i ain't no master mushroom grower that's for sure but until next time guys my name's craig you've been watching a small farm of life make sure you take care of yourself most of all take care of the family be genuine guys bye for now see ya